I think busting open the Haunted Mansion would be a good idea, because who does not like a good Disney IP? So this is Call of the Spirits game for ages 8 and up, 2 to 6 players. Let's see if it talks about the time, how long it takes. Yeah, it's on the box. Back it says about 30 minutes. So, and it says this should include um, hitchhiking ghost miniatures. And this is from Funko Games. Ooh, that. Try not to cut this box. This this box lid is very tight, surprisingly, so I can't even get the knife in to cut the plastic as easily. I found that the trick is sticking the knife down into the crack between the lid and the bottom of the box to not cut the box up first time. We'll see if this has anything to punch. This is one of the first nights I've not had something to punch while unboxing on stream. So, let's see what we got here. Let's see how well it slides open. Now, on the box itself, these three ghosts definitely are printed with a different texture. So I almost wonder if they've done something special with ink, maybe glow in the dark or something. I could be wrong. And so we got our instructions right here on top. A good list of contents, decent setup page, well listed, showing it, and icons or numbering where those pieces go. Uh, we got the objective right at the beginning because you got to know what you're doing, try, how do you win, and then of course that's when you start to play. Um, events, haunts explains the phases which is nice so it kind of does like a quick overview of the phase and then how the phases work actions hitchhiking ghosts what they do end of round final round scoring a reference thing right on the back of the rules thank you that is kind of one of my biggest things is you need a good reference in the rule book and so then on the back of it you either need a quick condensed rules of how of like each round how to play, or you need a good reference to the cards so you don't have to always dig through the rule book when playing. So I really appreciate that already. So this is manufactured by Funko, uh, game by Prospero Hall. And of course, it's a Disney IP. So welcome, foolish mortals. So right on the, looks like on the back of the game board itself. Uh, unfold it. Yeah, we gotta see the back of this. I mean, I move the box first. So, just this is the back of the board itself. This is not the game board face that you're playing on. They put this much effort and art in the back of the board. So, a when you open it, you immediately see that welcome foolish mortals and the way it's laid into the box, and then you open it and see this. That's just. The way they've thought through it is so nice. Not many games will do that. Um, let's see how... Okay, well, just naturally I want to turn it this way just because I would say top of the board is going to be where that gate is. But a lot of these rooms, it looks like it's more set up so you're looking down into it. So you don't necessarily have one exact view vantage point where everything you have to read from one side of the board which is nice because there's no words on here this is purely graphic art which is very nice now granted it's been three or four years since i've been to disney got to actually do like the haunted mansion ride and stuff like that so i can't tell you exactly how close this matches that or other uh things released from disney with the haunted mansion stuff on it but still very cool to see let's just go straight out of the box here so it looks like we have a couple of dials let's show off these dials on our other cam so both of these look to be the same they kind of look like the, the gargoyle lamps holding your candles and they have the dial already put together on the back um, so you don't have to assemble it yourself and they they turn very smoothly 
very easy to read numbers. So again, a good graph graphic style. Really like that. Uh, next up in the box, we had this bigger. Uh, it looks like almost like a lazy Susan. I wonder if it is. Nope, not a lazy Susan. Just two pieces of cardboard and glued together, which I'm going to assume that sits in the middle of the board to act like a lazy Susan in that you can turn it within the game board itself. So it, I was not wrong. It is lazy Susan style, but just the way they assembled it would be slightly different than I would have assumed. Instead of making this a spinner piece, it just spins on top of the board. I'll show off that art while I figure out what's else in the board. It looks like there's like a crystal ball there in the middle, and you can see a face there in the middle as well. So next up, we got, yeah, let's look at the miniatures in the first player token. I'm going to assume that's what it is. So we got a big token. I'm going to assume it's first player with the candelabra. And we're saying the artwork on the game looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Digging it so far. I am too. Um, I've not seen anything that would throw me off and away from it yet. Um, of course, a lot of times, artwork is one thing. But does it play well? That's going to be the key. Artwork gets me to the table. Gameplay keeps me there. Of course, with who I play with, too. So we got our first player uh, double-sided. So it's not just one side, which is really, really nice thought out in that way. And then let's open. You know what? Since the front of the, since the box itself talked about the ghosts miniatures, let's pull that out. So the traveling ghost. It's actually set up as one solid piece instead of three separate. So I'm sure there's a reason for this in the game. Uh, you're saying that's Madame Leota. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about who you who we see in the crystal ball. And then we uh, these were the traveling ghosts. So let's see how well we can get these to focus. So a lot of nice little details on these figures so far, like even this base is textured like they're walking on cobblestone. And then on this next baggie, I'm assuming these are going to be player pieces potentially um, because it's a two to six player game. There's six of these, I'm assuming these are colors for players to choose. and. JC has confirmed that Madame Leota is the one in the crystal bowl. So it looks like each of these are essentially looks like bats or little gargoyles. Um, each of these are the same, just different in color. So of course some of these colors are going to show off that detail slightly better. So hopefully you can see all the texture they put into the the wings and the f looks like fur. So I'm going to assume these are bats, kind of like you're hanging off the ceiling in the game or something like that. I'm probably wrong. Of course, we got green. Got to go with the classic colors. I'm surprised they didn't go yellow. They more went more with the kind of the, the hued green of the mist from the board. We got a gray and a blue as well. No, nothing wrong with the color they chose, of course. And we got, I like the ride here at Magic Kingdom. Good ride to sit and relax after a day of walking. I agree. Yeah, like I said, it's been several years. I think it was, what, uh, 2017 was the last time I was there and got to actually ride the ride. But yes, it, it's definitely nice and relaxing to kind of sit there, not be rushed, and just kind of glide through it as you get to see the attraction inside the ride. Okay, so we got some packs of cards I'm pulling out of the box now. Um, so I'm going to move this over. So let's see what we got going on with these decks. Well, since I talked about it with the last game, you know I'm going to bring it up here. These decks have that quick release tab pool in the plastic, at least in these two decks. Now the small deck, is it going to have a quick release or is it just going to be semi-loose plastic and yes these are cards those, those are decently small cards 
Like those are even smaller than like the standard uh, mini American mini Euro size cards. So not a size you're, I don't think you're gonna find sleeves easily for that size. Yeah, exactly, hooray for quick release. Um, that's something I always look for, always love when they do, because they've you can tell they've thought about it, they care care about what the players think, and not just about making money. So let's see if I can find the actual tab on it, and not just the line pool. Should be on this edge, if I can catch my nail on it. There we go. So I've started that one. You can see that quick release going. I'll go and try to grab this other one while I'm thinking about it. There we go. Yeah, so these two are going to pull really easily. Um, let's open this one first since we can see that it has uh, reference cards in them for players. Yeah, look. See, it's lovely when it's not just quick release. It has that extra little thread that actually pulls and tears it for you. When done right. Oh, look at that smooth plastic release. Gotta love it. Okay, so let's check out these reference cards real quick. Oh, nice. They actually did one for each color. Made the tops different. It does appear all the actions are the same. And that you don't have special abilities based on the color you choose. But you do get a at least color specific card to match your miniature which is always a nice extra tiny little detail that they can add instead of just making six cards that are all the same so it talks about how you can move rotate collect dual discard and kind of explaining what they do next to it which is very helpful uh back of these are exactly the same as it appears to be Which is nice. Uh, you might as well make use of the back of the card in some way. Uh, making this so these are double sided doesn't matter which way you put it down is nice. Or you could some games like to just do more artwork, not complaining on what they've done though. Okay, so we got some different card backs. Looks like we got blue card backs and green card backs. This other deck has some green, so I'm going to wait to look at the green a second. See so what we got going on here. So. We got some dark cards, um, black, white text, and it shows the ghost numbers at the top, uh, and then specific actions, like if you end your turn somewhere, or each time you use an action to rotate. So we got twos, we got threes, four, and then it looks like it just repeats itself. Oh, these might be timing cards because we get through it again there's not another four instead there's a final round card well don't know if these how, how these are used in the game but definitely interesting artwork to see it, it definitely that blue pops on that black background you got a little bit of purple accenting but it's not distracting at all 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 that white text is very easy to read so definitely liking what they've done so far graphics wise okay i'm going to pull the rest of the green backed cards from this other deck so we can look at all of them at the same time hopefully yeah so this whole other deck that I just opened is going to be that green back i'm going to assume they all get shuffled but let's just see what we got going on here So we've got quite a bit of different types of things going on here. Um, yeah, so these cards have their own artwork, shows different ghosts doing different things, and then different text durabilities or... Res uh, I don't want to say resources at the bottom. Prob probably scoring scenarios for the end game, because it looks like they show like, the cards score at the end of the game based on what you collect but i won't say too much on that and we got an oh like the countdown cards yes those are very intriguing and cool to see and so i'm gonna, so these look like scoring cards we'll i don't know if there's going to be repeats or not so we'll try to go through them and we got uh madam again 
more ghosts. Kind of looks like different portraits in the hall of what you might consider to be the ride. Kind of the, the talking statue uh, in the garden. Uh, that may be a repeat card, but we're not a problem with that. Because uh, we'll get to see more of the ghost in the, the heads. Oh, we got a ghost coming out of his own portrait. And this portrait, he needs some pants. We got the 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 singing lady. I don't want to say too much because everyone feels different about weight issues. I don't want to, or or I don't want to say where she's from either because that's assuming too much. Yeah, so, so far I've only seen a couple of, one or two repeats. Most of these all look different. But of course there's a lot of cards to go through. Yeah, so there there's a repeat right there again. So I, I guess there's multiple ways to score these in combo. Oh yeah, because you can score depending on if you get sets of these in different ways. And it looks like the the color at the bottom denotes the type of ghost they are. Um, so like the purple ones are considered ballroom ghosts. Um, just have a set scoring amount. Uh, we have some. So this is like a special ghost. Uh, they do not have icons or card types, um, but they all have their own abilities. Probably don't have time to read them all. This is set collector mechanic game. I believe that's right. Um, of course, I didn't read the full rules. Objective players gain points by socializing with ghosts around the mansion. Players collect ghost cards to make sets in front of them, which are worth different point values. Players want to avoid haunt cards as the most haunted player will lose points and play with the most points at the end wins. Yeah, so it's definitely a set collection style game where you're basically visiting and talking to ghosts and collecting the various sets or groups of ghosts together. Yeah, so we got a different color here now. We got paintings and artifacts. This blue is like the dancing ghosts. They're just sitting there dancing. That stack is gonna fall if I don't move it. Yeah, so we got some more of the, the stretching portraits. We got dancing ghosts. Yeah, so I'm starting to see some of the repeats now. Um, we got tea party ghost. But yeah, there's definitely a good variety of types and artwork. Um, very little repetition, except for like the stretching portraits where you're collecting the matching ones is where I've seen the most of the same. I think we even got a mummy ghost. Oh, ghosts have birthdays too. They want their cake. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of getting to the point where they, they feel somewhat similar, but they've Change it up. We got the bagpipes, the granny having tea, more dancing. Oh, we even got a crow. his head oh we even got a Medusa yeah so we got a lot of these cards I'll show you like just show you just how thick that total deck is when you stack all those together 
Okay, let's let's see what these small cards are now. Um, I guess I could check them if, I, if they have a name in the rule book. I'm sure they do. Um, yeah, so the small ones are going to be the haunt cards. We just looked at the ghost cards. It says there's 99 ghosts. And the other cards we looked at first, these are event cards. So let's see if I can open these. Okay, so that plastic is loose enough. There is no quick release on it, though. Loose enough plastic, I can get my knife under the edge of it without risking a card tear. Okay, so we've, we've been staring at the back of these cards, so I don't need to show off the back again. Alright, no, I don't see why not. Nice little eye. Somebody's watching you. So it looks like these have uh, little ghosts on them with numbers. Uh, we got twos and threes. Looks like the ghost artwork might be the same on all of them. It's primarily a change in... Oh, nope, there we got a one that's different. Oh yeah, so it looks like so one, you get you see one ghost, two ghosts, or three ghosts, depending on how many. What, the number is the same as the ghost. Looks like for the twos, you might get different a set of two ghosts. If it's the ones, uh, it's going to vary which of the three ghosts you see. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like there's just all of these are like that. There's just keeps going there's a lot of them um yeah i'm not seeing anything different for the rest of them so no need to show 120 of the exact same cards um yeah so that's all the components setup is basically board on the middle of the table with that spinner with that board on it probably have time to actually kind of show that quick setup Well, before I do, let's show off the, the box itself. Um, cardboard insert, pretty straightforward, simple, but it does seem like, okay, you have a spot for the smaller cards, regular cards, miniatures, board, um, which board was here? Oh, that was the, the circular board, spinner piece, and then you had the main board on top. So pretty straightforward, simple. Uh, Baggies just for the miniatures may not have been necessary. But in general, I know it's not going to spill too much when I put everything in it. So overall, not a bad insert. Nothing to complain about. It's, is it expensive plastic? No, but it's going to do its job. Uh, so setup, it looks like these car all those card decks get shuffled, set to the side of the table. You get your spinners at certain counts. It looks like the ghost moves around and it shows, at least the beginning, all the character pieces are here in the middle. And then the player who most recently heard a ghost story would take the first player marker. So if you're ready to play this and when you big first, uh, get those ghost stories in. So yeah, let's do a quick cleanup. Uh, show you just how easily this probably gets put back in the box. Uh, we have not done a shake test today, so I'll probably pull out Batman again. We'll do our shake test on that, and we can also do our shake test on this game. So if you have not been here with me before during an unboxing and a shake test, is I just take the game, put it back in the box, at least how it was intended, or if I have enough baggies at hand, I might go and put a few things in, but we just put it in, shake it. How well do the inserts work? Um, yeah, like, I really don't need to put those miniatures back into a Ziploc. They're, it's pointless to have this one miniature in a Ziploc, to be honest. That's my opinion. Keep yours in a Ziploc if you choose to. Nothing held against you if you do. So of course we got our circle thing right here in the middle. These were sitting here, which is nice because we know that's gonna hold it a little bit tighter because that is a little bit loose. But then again, we only have miniatures under it and not cards. So my main concern is these cards right here. If this is not a tight fit, those cards will come up and out and slide around. 
So those would be what I would want the Ziploc for. So let's do it. So no fart, no box fart, no lovely farts. I guess ghosts don't fart. We're gonna do our standard trick tests. Because it's gonna be thrown in the car, thrown on the shelf, sit sideways on the shelf in different ways. It might fall over. You know, we're not all perfect in how we handle our games. But you want a game that's gonna last, so you can play it a lot. Okay, so let's check it. Oh, I did not notice this. They actually put art in the top of the game box. Um, and that's made to, I believe that's made to look kind of like the elevator uh, from the ride. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But if, if I remember correctly, like the elevator was shaped like that. You get in, you can kind of see that at the beginning of the ride because of the wood paneling coming down, the stuff up top. It's made to kind of look like that room moves, even though it it's not doesn't truly really move. It's just made to look, feel like it. So I don't know if they actually call it an elevator. Probably isn't because it doesn't go up and down. Um, yeah, we were checking the shake. Okay, so of course the top things weren't going to move. Yep, that's what I was afraid of right there. See those loose cards? That's the one thing I was I thought might happen, and of course it did. So it looks like these cards are going to need a ziplock of some sort. Uh, these I can probably turn sideways, alleviate that, but these cards right here need something to stop them from sliding across. That is one of my little pet peeves when it comes to inserts is if it's going to hold it, it needs to work at all angles, all edges, and not be terrible.